one meeting done for the week. Monday. What are you doing? Got anything interesting over there? I better get close. I better get closer. This goes on the skid steer. Yep, that sticks out. I have a shackle on the end of it and a bolt. Put on well heads and move the trailer while we're doing there, both with the skid steer. Yeah. I don't think that ball's gonna go in that hole. You just need a small one. Yeah. But then it won't fit the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to look over here in this drawer. Bigger bitch here. You go in there. Right? <laughs> that, that's a big bit. You go in there. Jeez. You know those I usually, there? yeah. I usually do that with a hand one, a little electric one. Put them on in Milwaukee's. Yeah, Milwaukee will handle it. Dewalt, no, no bueno. All right, next thing on the agenda for the week, we're gonna get that tractor and ditcher and the six row back to Illinois so we can use them. Hopefully just be using this for just a sweet corn patch for our personal use. But we do also use that for a replant in small spots that are too small that we don't want to use the 24 row in. So hopefully just for sweet corn because I don't want to plant more corn. I already planted the corn. Why? Well, I don't want to plant twice. Jay's been washing trucks today. Yeah, she looks good. Now she just keeps running, she'll be great. More meetings done. Still wet. Ain't our six tenths. Wednesday. Not rain a day. Hopefully done for a few days. Or at least till tomorrow. Yard crew hard at it. Jay's over there cleaning up the heggy. Just got a new hub put on it. Garrett messed with a spray rig. It's wet enough we'll be out of field for a few days. Not for this sprayer though. I'm spraying around the uh Spraying the weeds around the farm while we got time to. One drink on me. Start feeling bad. Don't worry about it. Down here in the prairie where we've had a lot of rain. Ditch was out. But it's receded now. Things are looking good. This is some strip gel right here. direction the ditch was out on top of the corn but we've had a had a shower since to rinse the mud off of it. And so far it looks good so we don't rain too much Thursday and Saturday the other big kids rain. It went from dry dry to rains a lot here lately. A lot of different days. Like May may make up for the lack of rainfall in April in our part of the country. Got a few beans up here that we just planted a few days before the rain. It's uh, all before we quit that day. They're starting to come up, but there's water on the field and spots, so we're gonna have to check with it a little later date see if it's gonna make it or not. Maybe a real, little bit of replanting, but all in all, so far everything's stuck it real good. I'm just glad our stuff down in here was as far as long as it was. That we started planting when we did. Like last year, the cold soil sure didn't hurt us any. The ground was in good condition to plant it. Come right up, it took a little bit of time. Looks pretty now. Soil conditions are right to plant. Don't wait for soil temperature to warm up. It can be warm one day, a few days later, it'll be back cold again. Field here that's the uh, last field.
sort of plan is before the rains came some water on the spots it is tiled good so that'll help I'm sure you can't see it on camera there's just a few beans starting to neck through they should be up and now the heat three units but it don't matter when you got uh, that much water it holds it back for a while Today, me and Reese are going to go through these planters a little bit. Tell you what we like, what we don't like, over what we've had before. And I'll tell you right now, most of it's like. I want to what? talk about pride of ownership first. I want you to see how kind of clean, it's not clean, but how kind of clean this one is. I, mm -hmm. want, you, I want you to look over here. It's, it's a little dirty, a little dirty but I actually am not done. Yeah, it's true. And I didn't, well, look how I keep my blades though. No rust. Look at this guy. I like mine rusty so they don't turn too fast. See? Yeah. He yeah. likes to put fertilizer on his blades. That's true. Helps them grow. So mine stays a lot better, even though it's a lot dirtier. Okay. But probably the main thing on the case, between what we had before, I think the biggest advantage is right here. What do you think? Yeah, I really like the closing system on these. Instead of just one V thing, you got the, you got the blades, kind of pushes her up there, and then you got this that kind of just kind of packs her back down. We got air adjust on these blades from the cab. You can kind of tell if you're getting too much pressure, if you're cutting too much of a trench with this. It's really good if you're in a no-till situation. This kind of tills the dirt a little bit. Time you have your opener and this closes it, you got a nice band there about that wide that's actually tilled up. I know it's like the strip till marks. I went through them. By the time you're done with them, they look like they've been worked. You gotta watch it if you're in no-till situation going up and down the hill. Because I found out from that hard two and a half inch rain, it will wash some of that dirt out. This is not tilled here, and this is right up and down the hill. You have a little bit of a wash there, and your seed's actually shallower. So sometimes if you're on the hill, maybe have to plant a little bit more of an angle or crossways, even in a no-till situation like the depth adjustment it's different and it was everybody else you pull up move it this you push down to move it and they're actually labels i wrote down in the book what depth i planted like here i'm on d4 so you can write down if you're wondering should i've been planting on d3 or d4 beans so yeah you can look that up like this is true zero when it's down here and one thing this got the rest don't do which i didn't even do I don't know if you did any. You can go yeah. an eighth of an inch by turning it around instead of a quarter of an inch every turn, which is pretty much how they all are. Mm -hmm. Quarter inch for each notch. Is there anything back here on the units you don't like? There's something back here I don't like. Why don't you like? I don't like the way you have to get to the plates oh, there yeah. as good. I don't like that as good. That's better on the I deer, getting to the plates. The deer's got the plate right out here. Open it up, take it out, put in a different plate or whatever, clean it check it but this all comes apart easy after you learn how to do it there's just more to it you can't just bam out the plate i'll tell you something i don't like is getting the gauge wheel off but that's just because of my fertilize get the gauge wheel off when you got the conceal you gotta take this arm just one bolt though take that down drop it below your gauge wheel and that's just a key there take it oh, off and okay, it pops out okay so that's a little different, but that's just because if it didn't have the fertilizer, it wouldn't have that. Well, no. You don't have to worry about those staying tight either on the deer. It seemed like those were always working loose. I think every other brand, this wheel pushes, pivots back here, and it pushes the gauge wheel. Where the case pulls the gauge wheel, 
you don't even have to grease these. 48 row planter, you'd had 96 greasers on the gauge wheels. Besides them coming loose. These have no greasers and they, from experience, those don't wear bad there. Uh, it's pretty low maintenance planter, greasing wise. There yeah, really ain't much to them. Just a big, big pivot point is all I got to grease on mine. Yeah, I do the hubs every once in a while and where they lift, but. Yeah, I got them at two and a half inches right now. I ended it on Taggart, so that's as deep as I went anywhere, right there. All right. Yeah, I was anywhere between F, where am I at? F6 to, man, I even got down to D4. You even got your wheels poked up a little bit. Yeah, they are. Huh. They got some wear to them, to yours? No. Huh. Wonder why that is. Is I that stuff stalk, eating on them? Or? I guess the stalk is not as, uh, Bad as a short bean stubble for poking that. Cause these are not poked up. Got scrapers on the units on the disc. Yep. I don't really know if that's any big deal. I don't either. Kind of a pain to get on and off. That's mm -hmm. about it when you're but working on it. They stayed clean. Got the, this has got the 47 row. So every other row picks up hydraulically. And then you pin it right here. If you want to plant corn with it. Well, if we run it in this shop this winter, which we will, and replace all the openers, we'll probably do that yearly on both of them. We could pick this unit up, every other one lock it. That way you're not all jammed in here together. These will be up out of the way to do those front units that way. Make them a lot easier to get to. We may want to put these, leave them up, take them off there, take those off when they're locked up. Delta Force, I like that way better than what we had. And why is that? Because it lifts. Insane. If the other one lifts, it would have been fine. It's just, not everybody, might, maybe not everybody has that problem, but where we got some really loose sandy stuff, that's really, it's really nice. Because even if you have nothing but the weight of the unit, sometimes that's too much weight. Mm -hmm. A little advantage to mine over the other one. It's got 60 bushel hoppers instead of 50. Yeah, you got a little bigger ones where, than I got. Where the, where the planters, corn planters got 50s. But that's a big advantage up here. Here's where we're gonna put row number 48 next year. We went through this. Wiring's here for another row. We're gonna try to take this off, weld on a bracket like on this one, and make it a 48 row so to fit terraces better. And also we can stay in the same track for no-till right where the corn planter went last year. Put these two in between a 30 inch row. Let's get an extra 15 inches every every through. That's right, every round that's two and a half feet. Then up here on this. All right, this came with just a regular old clevis type hitch here. And you can see it's usually tongue light, this planter. And it wore it terrible. So we bought one of these, or our dealers furnished this, furnished us this hitch. Bull hitch or something they call it. This same thing John Deere's got on there. It's got a rotating ball. Don't wear near as bad. So I think that'd be a lot better. Case should do that in the factory. Uh, to get this level in the field, I had to put it in the bottom hole, which is no big deal, except when this comes around the fold, that big old piece out there comes in here and hooks. With that like that, this hitch up, this up higher, it just barely misses here. Hmm. So I'd say if that wheels are in real loose dirt, it ain't gonna get over this in certain spots. But since I good. moved it, it hasn't, I haven't not been able to fold up. Up here you see you got about four inches difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd drop this down probably three. So there ought to be a little more clearance between this and that. But it's working, but it's, it's just a little too tight. But they definitely all have that kind of hitch. It's even, you can see how much it's worth the clevis on the tractor. Oh yeah. That was flat. Case is supposed to get us this top piece too to change on the tractor here because that other hitch works so bad. Don't even get me started on your old type tracks here. So outdated. It's the best I got on. Power flax, we need some power flax on tractors. That's what we need. For not a fortune like it cost. Yeah, good luck with that. They like these crazy wheels uh, compared to like deers. 
But they have. I like them. I think you got to have them on this one because it's so heavy. Uh, I think you need them. But going kind of a there, pain for unfolding a little bit, ain't it? Got takes a little more room to unfold or uh, no? Than the other one, I don't believe it takes more room. But these are on the ground going down the road, holding your weight. Yeah, that'd be nice. Which is nice, but if you have to have a flat, you're stopped. You can turn shorter than me, and you're up higher than me, to where, like I had those blades dragging. Oh my! You, you don't have that. You don't. Up out yeah, here. mine don't do that. I like the tracks. I think this planter weighs forty-six, seven thousand pounds, somewhere in there. They don't go down the mud. These will go down first. They really hold the planter up. I like that my. Uh, alternator and compressors are on the wings so my middle is not as jammed up where your compressor is actually on the back mm -hmm. and your generator is too ain't it yep huh i like how mine is see how open mine looks in there mm -hmm. just, not that way just less stuff i can rub and wear on each other uh, another big item probably oh i like the over what i had last year i like the clean sweeps they both do fine just they had uh, the airbags right here pick them up and down which work great most of the time but if you went from like no-till to something really puffy worked up sand you couldn't hardly get them picked up out of the way they still drag every once in a while these things really get out of the way i like those I like those a lot how'd you get fertilized for up here when it folds up that's right underneath the field thing and oh, uh, got a little full, full. I got too full. Got only yep. twice all year that's that's not bad here's a big advantage if you have to get a hose off please just turn off like that mm -hmm. or the one we had last year the green one these was on with a hose barb and they was really hard to get off that yeah kind of he's a pick off. sometimes i think yeah we, i even had to cut them off a couple of times oh really off the hose they, they have to do that yeah of course we covered this to death that you can block off the hopper to clean these out if you got some this has got 700 gallon that really worked well i uh it was a little off my first load i just did the percentage i was high took that percentage off and it was dead on the rest of the year my uh fertilized rate that i want to do and i did a couple different rates so these will lift up hydraulically but they won't lift up manually hydraulically right correct we need to be able to lift them up with a switch back to the solenoid for transport if you're going in over a bump or something so they don't drag right that trouble a little bit the blades are wore out bad after one year almost six i guess about six thousand acres on this one and we did a lot of uh, hard ground tilling this year and strip till some no till maybe that's why they wore worse but yeah we think I, maybe the blades wear a little worse but we're not sure of that like i was able to go a year and a half with the deer ones and these but you had no no-till i didn't have it i had 700 acres of no-till this year 1600 acres of strip till that was stripped in the fall not in spring and it was dry so it was hard so last year everything was tilled so yeah and a couple years before so we don't know well, if it's really the blades or it's just the way what we was doing. Yeah, it could be condition instead of equipment, but I can see that one ain't very good. See that front lead blade? The back one's not as bad. The blades are staggered as well. That's, a different That's another thing that makes the front blade wear worse. Yep. But it makes it penetrate awfully good in the hard ground too. So I know we would not penetrate. We would not say that's a disadvantage, the offset blades. We like that. Might make the front one wear a little worse. I like the tractor too. I really like the tractor. It was a horse. But I had a 340 last year. So you're not comparing apples to apples with this thing. I was able to go 12 mile an hour a lot of times. Not always. I mean, I was capable of it. I was playing 11 for the majority of it not a big enough fuel tank case not near big enough fuel tank and it needs vented better or something because you can't even fill it up that's not very good why can't we just have this tank coming out here a little further that'd be a lot better i guess your wheel goes in here when you turn so it looks like you could have a little more storage here you can run what eight hours on it 
10? 10. That's not near enough. It needs to be able to run at least 14, 16 hours on a fuel tank. Um, def tank's nice and big. Yeah, def will go almost two days, not quite. Anything you like better about the green over the red? On what? The planters. Yeah, I like the green, how you get the plates in and out a lot better. I think uh, it may be a little more durable on the, this has got the precision planting, which works great. Uh, the deer's got their own, got the brush deal. A lot more expensive to fix, replace, but. Lasts longer. Lasts a lot longer, that part. I don't know what the cost per acre breakdown is on that. They end up being about equal or I not. I don't know. Probably would be. And then it's got them little gears that meter down in there. They wear out, we found out. I had one of those, yep. But it's a lot cheaper stuff, and it works just as good. If not I better, probably maybe. probably still take the metering part on the deer over this one. I don't know if you would. This I, I like yeah. the boot system so much better than the closing system. I feel like you can get 100% singulation, stuff like that, a lot easier with this one. On the monitor, how it actually is, I don't know. They both do a fantastic job. I had a lot less trouble with this one the first year than I did the other one. You had a lot of like uh, technical issues, right? The technical issues, couldn't get the vacuum sensors to work right on the other one. I do, would say usually, I, I would say that Deer's got the better tech and guidance and all that stuff. But I feel like Case has made a lot of strides, but who knows that Case might be even better than we think because we couldn't use the 1200 monitor this year. He's that's an true. old 700, so you know, that's not good. That's but. kind of bad, bringing out a new monitor, new player, and they won't work with each other. It's kind of crazy, but that's the way it was. Yeah, but it ended up working fine. I mean, but. But the John Deere brush like most things. drilled in this frame for your vacuum on each unit. Your hose is plugged into that frame. Well, two of them, as you remember last year's videos, there was plugs left in the frame from poking the hose at the oh, factory. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Sucked them plugs out, went up into the fan, run the fan, that happened twice on it. That was just poor horsemanship. Wasn't very crazy about that deal. I like them both real well. Boy, if they just put them both together, you'd have the perfect planner. Yeah, both. We're fortunate enough that we got two Really good dealers close, but good service, everything. But the question is, if you had equal dealers, equal service, equal money, what planner? Well, for me, it's, it's the red one. I think I'd probably go red one too. For all At least red. on year one. Who knows? Year two, it might start falling apart. Right. You ran the other one. <laughs> We're only what, one three year. Years? Four years. Four I years. ran the deer planter four years and had zero issues the first three. The fourth started had some problems, but it had, it had a lot of acres on it, 20,000 at least. So. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot less trouble the first year than I did before. I like the case. Yeah, I think you might have got like a lemon the, last year a little bit. I like the way it puts it in the ground. That's the main part, getting it in the ground right. That's what I like. I like the tracks. I suppose you can get them from deer. I don't know. I've seen deer planters with tracks on them. I don't know if they're deer. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that either. I don't know. So we don't know nothing about that. Don't know nothing about that. And um, and well, your planter was new last year. Mine was four years old. Tractor two, but yeah. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Just get you a good deal. Go with that one. <laughs> our buddy John Rose, he's got our old deer, and he really likes it. Or a DB60. Yeah. Yep. So it's worked really great. So that's good. He's in Southern Tennessee. Southern Tennessee. And buddy up in Minnesota asked which one we like better, 2150 or 2160. But I don't know. It just kind of depends what you're going to use, really. Well, for just corn, I'd go this one. A lot lighter. A lot lighter. If you're going to plant beans, you got to go with that one. Yeah. If you just lighter. go have one planter, I'd have that one because you can plant both of them. But up north, do they do all 30s, I wonder? Or? Probably uh, do. Depends where you're at. Everybody do farms 30s, different. I'd do this one. Everybody farms different. Everybody thinks their way is the best. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. We know ours is. Of course. Thursday. 
Oh, replacing some small flags I had on hand while I was planting with some big flags. Marking a tile hole on the iPad. What we have here is a tile hole. We tiled this farm in uh, 2010. I remember that because we were tiling this farm right when Reagan was born. Anyways, when we tile it with plastic, there was an old clay through there. We hit it. So now we have a tile hole it's sucking dirt. This will need fix. Hopefully fix it this fall, this winter. But for now, we're going to... I should have done this while I was in the tractor. But I didn't get this one. So what we'll do, we'll mark it in our climate field view where it's at. So we know where to come back and get it. And that way when Jay or whoever's come through here fungiciding this, when this corn's eight to 10 foot tall, he'll know to look for it. So all we really have to do is see where we're at, press and hold, make a pin, right tile hole or whatever. Save it. And when he's coming through here, he'll have his climate field view up. He'll see that pin, he'll be knowing to look for it. So hopefully uh, save Jay a broken nose or face. You're welcome, Jay. And digging a little corn. This side has no two by two. This has 10 gallons of two by two. Put on through the concealed gauge wheels. I always think this is so neat. There's the seed that it grew out of. All the roots it's got now and the plant that it is. Just so cool. But no difference now, but uh, expecting to see a difference here as it quits living off the seed and starts living off the earth. I'll put them back, which may be futile, but Digging. I should probably mention while I'm out here that the spacing looks phenomenal. And this is also a strip till field. I don't know if I said that or not, but it is. We're redoing a bridge right next to us. And that is a big old beam. Yeah, that drone shot of the bridge don't really have anything to do with anything we're doing. Just thought it might look cool. So uh, back to farming. What are you doing to the old gal? Well, it was leaking. What the, What was leaking? The Titanic? The Titanic's the supposed Titanic to have leaks. leaks. Have you ever seen the movie? 
Yeah, the guy dies and the girl lives. Yeah, if it gets cold, <laughs> she wins. There's only enough room for the females. <laughs> yeah, now that T right up there was leaking so with the new and all and a manifold type. It's got a rubber gasket seal in there. Clamped it back on. Put it on new elbows down here. So now everything matches up instead of being three inches off was and putting everything in a bind hopefully no leaks well we still haven't opened that valve so i don't know yet leave it shut then it'll be fixed yep and i broke this little bitty elbow rip it down. uh that's just for fungicide anyways yep we'll let jay worry about that well so i drive up crawford county and do a little scouting it is definitely drier up here it was planted later so the corn's not as big as around home but it's a lot drier we could be side dressing this today up here if we wanted to. If it wasn't such a far drive, we might. But uh, a lot of chances of rain this weekend. Again, it's wet around home. But uh, see what this weekend brings. If it don't rain any, we might come up here, start side dressing, and then go back home. But we'll just hold off on moving for now in case, you know, rains a bunch up here and not at home. So, oh, you never know what to do, but. Stands are looking good. Everything's off to a great start. Can't be much better, really. Be a little nicer, is drier at home, and it. But overall, very happy. So, remember, if you want to get your merch, go check it out at ivers-farms.myshopify.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next week.